Dear students, welcome to this session. I am Dr. M. Yanamani, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, the American College, Madurai. In this session, we are going to learn trade documentation, in which warehousing is a very important title in this trade documentation. Before that, we are going to see what is trade documentation. Paper documentation or electronic files used in trade documentation that prove certain events have taken place. Documentations that satisfy a governmental requirement such as certificates of origin, export declaration, import licenses or consularized documentation. Trade requires expertise in the full range of documentation necessary to export goods from one country, transport the goods internationally, and import to another country. Customs is in knowing the rules and preparing perfect documentation in advance of every shipment. Now coming to warehousing. Warehousing consists of three categories. First one is functions of warehousing. Second one is importance of warehousing and uh, types of warehousing. First we are going to see what is warehousing. A warehouse is a building for storing goods. Warehouses are used by manufacturers, importers, exporters, wholesalers, transport business and customs etc. They are usually large plain buildings in industrial parks on the outskirts of cities, towns or villages. A warehouse may be defined as a place used for the storage or accumulation of goods. The functions of storage can be carried out successful with the help of warehouses used for storing the goods. By storing the goods throughout the year and releasing them as and when they are needed. Warehousing creates functions of warehousing. There are five categories of functions. First one is storage, price stabilization, risk bearing, financing and finally grading and baking. First of all, storage. This is the basic function of warehousing. Surplus commodities which are not needed immediately can be stored in warehouses. They can be supplied as and when needed by the customers. Second one is price stabilization. Warehouses play an important role in the process of price stabilization. It is achieved by the creation of time utility by warehousing. Fall in the prices of goods when their supply is in abundance and rise in their prices during the slack season or avoided. Third one is risk bearing. When the goods are stored in warehouses, they are exposed to many risks in the form of theft, exploration, fire, etc. Warehouses are constructed in such a way as to minimize these risks. Contract to payment operates when the goods are stored in wave houses. The person keeping the goods in warehouses acts as boiler. A warehouse keeper has to take the reasonable care of the goods and safeguard them against various risk. For any loss or damage sustained by goods, warehouse keeper shall be liable to the owner of the goods. Fourth one is financing. Loans can be raised from the warehouse keeper against the goods stored by the owner. Goods act as security for the warehouse keeper. Similarly, 
banks and other financial institutions also advance loans against warehouse receipts in this manner warehousing acts as a source of finance for the businessman for meeting business operations and finally grading and packing nowadays warehouses provide the facilities of packing processing and grading of goods goods can be packed in convenient sizes as per the instructions of the owner then we are going to see importance of warehousing there is a need for storing the goods so as to make them available to buyers as and when required some amount of goods is stored at every stage in the marketing process proper and adequate arrangements to retail the goods in perfect condition are essential for success in marketing storage enables a firm to carry on production in anticipation of demand in future warehouses enable the businessman to carry on production throughout the year and to sell their products whenever there is adequate demand at the same time warehouses arises also because some goods are produced only in a particular season but are demanded throughout the year similarly certain products are produced throughout the year but demanded only during a particular season so warehousing facilitates production and distributions on a large scale first one is regular production raw materials need to be stored to enable mass production to be carried on continuously sometimes goods are stored in anticipation of a rise in prices warehouses enable manufacturers to produce goods in anticipations of demand in future second time utility warehouse creates time utility by bringing the time gap between the production and consumption of goods it helps in making available the goods whenever required or demanded by the customers some goods are produced throughout the year but demanded only during the particular seasons example raincoat umbrella heater etc and the other hand some products are demanded throughout the year but they are produced in a certain region example wheat rice potatoes etc third store up surplus goods basically a warehouse acts as a store up surplus goods which are not needed immediately goods are often produced in anticipation of demand and need to be preserved properly until they are demanded by the customers goods which are not required immediately can be stored in a warehouse to meet the demand in future fourth one is price stabilization warehouses reduce violent fluctuations in prices by storing goods when their supply exceeds demand and by releasing them when the demand is more than immediate productions and ensure a regular supply of goods in the market this matching of supply with the demand helps to stabilize prices fifth one is minimization of risk warehouses provide for the safe custody of goods perishable products can be preserved in cold storage by keeping their goods in warehouses businessman can minimize the loss from damage fire theft etc the goods kept in the warehouse are generally insured in case of loss or damage to the goods the owner of the goods 
can get full compensation from the insurance company. Sixth point, packing and grading. Certain products have to be conditioned or processed to make them fit for human use. Example, coffee, tobacco, etc. A modern warehouse provides facilities for processing, packing, blending, grading, etc. Finally, financing. Warehouses provide a receipt to the owner of goods for the goods kept in the warehouse. The owner can borrow money against the security of goods by making an endorsement on the warehouse receipt. In some countries, warehouse authorities advance money against the goods deposited in the warehouse by keeping the imported goods in a bonded warehouse, a businessman can pay customs duty in installments. Then uh, now we are going to see types of warehouses. There are three types of warehouses. Uh, first one is private warehouses and second one is public warehouses and bonded warehouses. First of all, private warehouses. The private warehouses are owned and operated by big manufacturers and merchants to fulfill their own storage needs. The goods manufactured or purchased by the owner of the warehouses have a limited value or utility as businessmen in general cannot make use of them. Because of the heavy investment required in the construction of a warehouse. Some big business firms which need large storage capacity on a regular basis and who can afford money construct and maintain their private warehouses. A big manufacturer or wholesaler may have a network of his own warehouses in different parts of the country. Then uh, public warehouses. Public warehouses are very important in the marketing of agricultural products and therefore uh, the government uh, is encouraging the establishment of public warehouses in the cooperative sector. Moreover, a public warehouse is also known as duty paid warehouse. Public warehouses is a specialized business establishment that provides storage facilities to the general public for a certain charge. It may be owned and operated by an individual or a cooperative society. It has to work under a license from the government in accordance with the prescribed rules and regulations. Public warehouses are very useful to the business community. Most of the business enterprises cannot afford to maintain their own warehouses due to huge capital investments. In many cases, the storage facilities required by a business enterprises do not warrant the maintenance of a private warehouse. Such enterprises can meet their storage needs easily and economically by making use of the public warehouses without heavy investment. Public warehouses provide uh, storage facilities to small manufacturers and traders at low cost. These warehouses are well constructed and guarded round the clock to ensure safe custody of goods. And these are generally located near the junctions of railways, highways and waterways. They provide excellent facilities for the easy receipt, dispatch, loading and unloading of goods. They also use mechanical devices for the handling of heavy and bulky goods and also enables a businessman to serve his uh, customers quickly and economically by carrying 
regional stocks near the important trading centers of markets of two countries then it provide facilities for the inspection of goods by uh, prospective buyer they also permit picking uh, grading and uh, uh, etc so finally bonded warehouses bonded warehouses are licensed by the government to accept imported goods for storage until the payment of custom duty they are located near the ports these warehouses are either operated by the government or work under the control of custom authorities the goods are held in bond and cannot be withdrawn without paying the custom duty the goods stored in bonded warehouses cannot be interfered by the owner without the permission of custom authorities hence uh, the name bonded warehouses bonded warehouses are uh, very helpful to importers and exporters if an exporter is unable or unwilling to pay customs to team immediately after the arrival of goods he can store the goods in a bonded warehouse he can withdraw the goods in installments by paying the customs duty proportionately in case he wishes to export the goods he need not to pay a customs duty moreover a bonded warehouse provides all services which are uh, uh, provided by public warehouses and goods lying in a bonded warehouses can be back graded and branded for the purpose for sale thank you all if you have any doubts please ask me